from from our you days, mommy cookie boom was always in trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bed sheet, bed sheet, bed sheet, she cover that. She cut it. Yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 Neil, Southwest Adventures. Good night, good night, folks. What do you see, brother? Hi, good man. Good to see you. Nice to see me, man. So, you was telling me your kite competition. It was a great success. It was nice. I mean, your objective was met. Right. Which is like bringing the community together and kind of uplifting the kite flying ability. I was, I was impressed, honestly, with so many designs that, that I would have seen. So just to, to get clarification, this was hosted on on the Easter weekend. Easter Monday. Easter Monday. Yeah. So Southwest Adventures actually had a kite flying competition. It's his first his first annual kite flying competition and it was hosted on Easter Monday in the Ikakas Savannah. Correct where there were lots of kites he will give us a little breakdown right yeah so <clears throat> what happened uh we had five categories we had the noisiest kite now these guys nowadays they actually make a they use the clear tape and they cut it about quarter inch and they put it mm -hmm. and it makes a very loud zinging song yeah so there was a price for the, mo the noisiest kite there was a prize for the most colorful kite, the most unique kite in terms of design, um, the most colorful kite, mm -hmm. and the best overall kite, which will, is, is a kite that is, that is magnificent in appearance, as well as has special flying ability. So almost like all the characteristics in terms of prettiest, most uh, intricate, yeah, yeah, noisiest, a little bit of everything, yeah. Right. So, how many um, kites entered the competition? I had 38 kites registered in total, but there were other kids had, which had their um, normal, uh, I don't know if you call it butterfly kite, you know, mm. those homemade kites? Yeah. They were just flying around, you know, just with their part of the... 38 kites registered? Registered for the event. And from looking at the video with you just now, I noticed that there were all races of people there. I even see down the, it had Spanish people. Yeah, well, what happened? In, in, our, in our village, we have a lot of migrants from venezuela live in there they, they have become part of the, the community mm -hmm. but they are good they are very good in kite making i mean that yeah, well, yeah, 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 they, yeah. They, they, they did it they, they were exceptional actually the winner of the overall competition was um a, a kite that a venezuelan that's the, the young spanish yeah. boy that collected the prize yeah this kite was was exceptional yeah that was a nice because kite. we had a little challenge with the win and then his kite saw Despite, 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 yeah, despite the challenge of when his kite so and it fly, it flew exceptional. Yes, because seen to the latter part of the video, rain actually came. Yeah, it, it rained, it rained down to the, the, to the end of the uh, session. Yeah. Right. So, tell us a little bit, um, because we, he's actually telling us, but you actually have the option to go across to his channel, Southwest Adventures. Go across there, guys. Check out the video. It was a beautiful video. So nice to see the community coming together. The Spanish migrants, as he said, right? It it was really a beautiful video. <clears throat> so go across and check the video. Was it cash prizes or there were cash prizes as well as there was trophy. Trophies, and, um, okay. There were also ham there was a hamper also. Right. So you're planning to make this into a yearly thing? I am hoping to do so for sure. Because um a lot of people came to me after the event and they say, would you be hosting this again next year? I say, I'm looking forward to host it, providing that I get some, you know, people to sponsor some of the prizes for the event. Yeah, because yeah. Um, there, there were some generous folks that reached out to me and they would have contributed towards the prizes. And I mean, it went, back, it went back straight into the community. Yeah, well, that's really yeah. nice. And may God bless the hearts of those who contributed to the successful event. Was it difficult for you to to coordinate this event and also at the same point in time try to do your vlogging? Yes, <laughs> it was. It was. 
Yeah, it was it was uh, it was because I had to be on the ground and kind of managing things, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. yet I was still able to to get in a vlog. I see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But all in all, I mean, I I feel, I mean, the objective was met, and um, I see happy kids are wrong, and I think that was. Something that you know. But well, I know you like to bring joy to. Yeah, when I see the kids, kids and I'm happy, you know, you know, it, it brings it brings a certain mm. amount of joy to you. Especially, the, especially, it's a remote area. It's a depressed area in terms of um, employment opportunities and economic hardship. And um, I think I think it's some you know having these kind of thing. You know, it tends to bring out certain amount of. I would say um, you know, it's some, something to look forward to. And um, hopefully we could get some more. People coming out next time around, and believe it, believe it or not, a lot of people who who have seen the video, they, they, see, they would have wanted to be part of it, but they didn't know about it because I really didn't reach out to the wider community. Maybe just some folks from the village of Fullerton, Ikakas, and a couple of folks from Sijos. Right. So, I mean, it could only get better. Yeah. And so you you particularly did not market it. You wanted it to be really. Well, yeah, around at least initially. Yeah, you know, initially, just, just, just within, your, yeah, within your the confines of the of the Sidras Peninsula, mm -hmm, so to mm -hmm, speak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, kite flying is something that I mean, when we think about being from from our youth days, you yeah. know, um, Mami Kukie Boom was always in trouble. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> bed sheet, bed yeah, yeah, she, she, she covered it. <laughs> She could it. You know what? Yeah, you're ripping on your copybook page. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she little tried what she had to mend up there. You know what I mean? For so, real, you know, for real. You know, and um, we're going down by the little tree for glue. Yes. It's a little tree down in Kaka. Yeah, that's the little thing you squeeze out. Yeah, squeeze it and again glue. We're going down by Mr. Siri on the side and again. Yeah. Really. I, remember, and I remember my first big kite I make, a mad ball. It could be about, maybe about four feet. Could be about just over four feet in size. I tied that on my back window, which was a wooden window. When I go along in the back, anything you thought you would know it. You would know how? Bye. You know, I don't think I'm not for that. <laughs> but, you know, that all I was part of yeah, is, you know, growing yeah. up in the countryside. And um, it, it, it feels good to know that you could bring back these things yes, now, you know, yes, yes, like yes. Um, kite flying thing, you know. Why? So here, this time, um, do you offer like any tours and things in the carcass or, or not really? Well, yes I do. Um, so some people who like hiking, um, maybe like to the mud volcanoes or to go on the wetlands. You'll have mud volcanoes yeah. down in the carcass? Yeah, we have mud volcanoes in Sijos, yeah. We have two big ones and um, we have another one called the Balkadevi Shrine. It's a shrine. We have the World War II bunkers. You have a lot of places of interest back Wait, there. What kind of shrine? The Balkadevi Shrine is actually where one of these mud volcanoes. Well, actually, people who who um comes who manage the place, uh -huh. they actually claim that because of mm. maybe the rituals they perform or whatever, it yeah. keeps the volcano kind of quiet. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So and there's also the World War II bunkers close by the 200 year old tomb of the former planters. Hey, I would love to go there, boy. Yeah. I always say about this, this kind of like where it's called like Galfa. Green side. Hill, yeah, Green Hill, Green Hill. That's I like, said, back to so like in, like the, in, the, in, side in the year like 1943, days during World War Two, mm. there used to be a big sprawling military base with cinema and everything. Where in the back there? Yes. And, and it they still had, have. Well, it, like all, all, it, all of, it have remained there is like the um the gun emplacement, um with the Panama Mount. Well, the, gu the gun emplacement and the bunker where they store the ammunition. Which will be like a modern day cannon. Well, not a cannon actually, you know, it's a coastal artillery gun. With a, a Panama gun. And all the, the, yeah, the, the yeah, it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. steel platform. Yeah, yeah, it's a circular platform there, yeah, in the middle. And everything there is still there, the gun, the gun emplacement and everything. But there's rumor that they buried the gun, I don't know. Wow. But that, but remember during World War Two, those submarines that could have come I think I want to believe that the British had a, um, a big military base um, fleet in the Gulf of Paria. So they had to defend that area from the Columbus Channel side, which is between Trinidad and Venezuela, and then on the north coast, on the north between Trinidad and um, 
Venezuela, which is like Shaka Shakari and all yeah. the islands. So they had coastal artillery guns mounted there and then on the south coast. Because it, it's an elevated point then. And when you think about it, they would have been able to control Columbus Channel there because it's a narrow yeah, strip. Yeah, yeah, it's about 11, yeah. maybe just over 11 kilometers yeah. and the crow flies from that area to the Venezuelan mainland. So what kind of range do you think that gun might have? I point? think it was about 13 um, kilometers. Because what, that, actual, that? Yeah, the coastal so artillery anything gun. anything passed through Columbus Channel? Well, actually, actually the, if you look at a navigational chart of that area, yeah. there are two wrecks in that area. You know? Which could have been what that well, gun well, take down actually, then? actually, in interviewing a, a guy from my area, he said he was in school. He is 90 years old now. And he was in school and he actually here when that gun fired off. And he heard the blast of a, of a the uh, seven short followed by one long blast of a ship, which is, is an indication distress? of abandoning ship. Okay. And then later down in the evening, he, he, the boat, the lifeboat came into Constance Estate. With the sailors who were Yeah, and some men, some men were badly burnt and all that. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, so yeah. The carcass have a lot of history, believe it or not, a lot of history. I would love for you to take me to see those bunkers, boy. Well, you know why so, eleven just come true. Okay, but I just curious to know. Like, let's say some people want you to take them on such a hike. Mm -hmm. What will be the arrangement? They call you, but they drive down to your well, place well, okay. or your meet and see. No, well, I could rendezvous with them at Bonas and I could take them take them around thereafter because it, 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 it's kind of off the main road. And so you, you, need, you, need a, you, need a, you need a guide, you know what I mean? To, so what, you'll have to leave your car at one particular point? But I might leave my car in, my, in Bonas and I could I could accompany them. Right. Preferably if they have like a, a one of those like a four by four, yeah, or, four, something. By four or something you know it's, yeah but, but you, you, you were conditioned you, yeah close? you're getting actually onto the site with the four by four okay yeah and of course they could get in contact with you and you will make your personal yeah price and arrangement that kind of thing okay. you have a number that you usually give out on youtube yeah, if, 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 if you service. got anybody who might be so interested you could call me at seven six seven one three two eight all right let's repeat that one but, more because, time because um seven six seven one three two eight um, I'm mostly available on weekends and on public holidays. Right. But I am um, actually work during the week. Okay. But you can still call, you know, I mean, you could probably splice in, you know, in an afternoon session or something. No, we in, we, well, the Easter holidays is almost finished. Mm -hmm. But I know usually around this time, is the lagoon dry? Yes, it is. So there, there are lots of ducks at the wetlands at this point in time. And um, there's also and some American flamingos there as well. Flamingos? Yes, yes. If, if you guys look at my video, you will actually see me post up some of those American flamingos at the wetlands. I think you all need to go across and check out this guy's channel. Flamingos the man saying. And he says that he has evidence on his channel. Yeah. Well, the, the, they are not there throughout the year, but they visit. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I have seen the very rare Jabiru store visit, visit that, that wetland as well. I didn't see them in last year. So I'm hoping to see them this year, hopefully. Oh, the Jabiru store is one of the biggest birds, I think, of, of, of in South America. It's so red. bigger than the flamingo also? Yes, it is. The Jabiru stock is, is red, white and black in color. So you what, can probably put is, a, um, what, a picture, I don't know. Yeah, but what it looks like? It's, it's like um I, I say it has a look like a like a pelican. It uh -huh. has a black head and a kind of red throat. The crop crop away call it is red. Yeah. And then the rest is white and the, the feet is black. But it's really tall. It's much taller than the flamingo. Like, I actually never, is the, it actually I, is the biggest bird in South America. I think never the yeah? Listener, before we head off this clip here, mm. Uncle Tony. This is Uncle Tony, uh, right? That's mommy's brother, right? Uncle Tony. Tell me a story, boy, uh, about when a tapir end up in the carcass. A tapir. Is yeah, a, I know, is I know a, tapir. The tapir like is a, a big, big mama, a right? Big, like a kind of snout, yeah. Yeah, you have a kind of eat a look to him too, right? He said, boy, a tapir end up coming down in some of the leaves from Venezuela. Uh -huh. And this tapir into a big hunt doggy carcass. Everybody want to capture that. Everybody want to capture this tapir. 
And he gave a story about a man from the estate a white man mm. driving a Land Rover and he see the chopper. He driving on the beach. Eh? Mm. Don't concern say I already see the chopper in bash on boy. <laughs> and he hit a sandbag. <laughs> <laughs> and the sandbag, the Land Rover over to me. He said, boy, Land Rover flips so the white man flies so, gun flies so. <laughs> Mm. He said, it's happening like it's a real swim too. Yeah, no, 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 no. They he said, men chasing it. It's happening to run outside. Men started to pull net to see if they could tap. He said, boy. Real action. Boy, real action that tapper goes on in that. But they catch it? They, they were able to catch it? Boy, I, I, I was <laughs> laughing so much. <laughs> I never, I, I can't remember how this story is, boy. Mm. But all I know is that this white man overturned. This land over, boy. Yeah. But it's all good to get this story. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. dramatic, he, he was dramatic. He man flies so, he hat flies so, he gun flies so. <laughs> oh, gosh. So, Good guys, buddy, buddy. I hope all you enjoyed this little clip, right? With Southwest Adventures. Go to his channel, check it out. Guys, if you like the content, of course, smash that subscribe button. Yeah. Deal? No, but um, I just focus. But my, I just, just to give you all a, a little idea of what I do. Yeah, now. man. Let me hear the man in closing. I, I try to cover the Southwestern Peninsula, flora, fauna, cultural events, um, country life. You know? And, um, you know, since I started doing these vlogs, you know, a, a lot of people, they, they, they love the country life. And they, sometimes they, they reach out to me, they want to come and visit and all that. And, um, some of them say when they come to, to Southwest Trinidad, it, it's, it's a different part of the island and the, the whole makeup of the place is so different, you know, and um, it kind of, some of them feel like they're down in the land, the land of Llanos in Venezuela, but um, Southwest Trinidad is, is, is unique in its, own, in its own way, you know, you're driving through the coconut fields, the wetlands, you know, it's, it's actually have a, 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 there's a guy who I know, He's a doctor, he lives in Point Fortin and he says when he feels stressed, he drives from Point Fortin to Icacus and get back home. And that's his therapy. He, yeah, that is that is just his therapy. Just to just to get away from the hustle and bustle and be down in the countryside. It's a therapy yeah, in itself. <laughs> so, so check me out guys and guy. if you feel my content worth it, you know, do the needful. And, and um, that's it, then you know one more time. Seven six seven one three two eight. All right. So anytime right. you want to talk, we endorse this man for Ikaka Southwest Adventures. All right, good man. So from Southwest Adventures, have a good night and see you all. Blessings. Blessings.